It is happening guys. It's 2021 and we have successfully created a human monkey hybrid. Interesting development in the scientific community. A lot of ethical issues surrounding this. This is not a joke, but I do want to go through this with you because I think it's a great scientific breakthrough. Um, maybe not so much of a great thing, but it is definitely ground shaking. There's a lot of debate about this. Uh, I pulled up an image of a human monkey hybrid from the internet uh, and this is what I found. Of course, the hybrid that we are looking at in the news is not like this, but I'm not surprised if one day we get to the stage where we actually create a creature, human, I'm not even, I don't even know what to call it, um, that looks something like this, a whole new species. Now, what exactly is happening? Let's get to the news here. Yeah. Now, in this article, uh, rather a report that was published April 15, 2021. First ever human monkey hybrid created in Chimera embryo experiment. Now in this article, it says scientists have successfully combined human and monkey cells into a single living growing embryo in a major and ethically complex breakthrough for organ transplant research. I think you kind of know where this is, grow uh, this is going. Okay. Um, scientists have been trying very hard to uh, combine human and monkey cells together and create a, an embryo. Embryo is basically a baby. Uh, maybe not at the baby stage yet, but you know, it's maybe like a couple of uh, days or weeks old. And it says the scientists effectively created genetic chimeras. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a chimera is uh, an organism with multiple cells in there. It's quite uh, different from a hybrid per se. Uh, I'll explain the difference in a, uh, in a bit. Yeah. It says, the scientists um, injected 25 human stem cells into a macaque embryos. Macaque is a kind of monkey. Uh, taken six days after fertilization. Human cells were found growing inside 132 of the embryos after one day, and 103 chimeras were still alive after day 10. Nearly all had died by day 19, and the rest were destroyed on day 20. So this chimera, this, um, I would say still animals, they were destroyed in 20 days, meaning they were killed. The embryos were essentially monkeys. They are not like the kind that, you know, in the image that I showed you earlier, they're not like that. They don't have any semblance of uh, humans in them because they only have some human cells growing in the embryo, which is quite different. There are two kinds of hybrids, okay, rather, you can think of it as, uh, um, in a simple term. The first kind of hybrid is when you have an organism with two DNAs inside a single cell. Okay. Another kind of uh, hybrid is when you have an organism okay, with two types of cells in the same body and each type of cell will carry their own DNA. So. Um, what this is saying is these monkeys, they have human cells growing in them. The monkeys are not humans per se, but they do have some um, parts of the tissues that are from human stem cells. Uh, what's so special about this uh, research is okay, it has to do with some ethical issues. Now, this is a report published in 2019. There was a big hoo-ha over this. I remember reading this article back then because it was from China. Scientists are making human monkey hybrids in China. And you know, the moment the word China comes out, everyone starts screaming, oh my god, you know, China is creating these monsters. What exactly is happening? Um, it is the same people, if you notice, Belmont, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, yep, here, Belmont. It, it is the same team of people. Um, what they have done is, in the US, these people, scientists are probably, uh, I think they're they are Spanish, but they are conducting their experiments both in China and in the US. Now, in the US, National Institutes of Health says, federal funds can never be used to create mixed human monkey embryos. There are regulations to, uh, that prohibit the um, creation of hybrids like this in the US. But the same regulations do not apply in China. So. These scientists, they are using these regulatory loopholes in order to conduct experiments that are 
ethically controversial. It says here there's no such rule in China, which is probably why the research is occurring there. We'll talk a little bit about uh, regulations later on. Yeah, But then uh, this author also brought up this argument that says, not author, rather, this person says, I've I always made the case that it doesn't make sense to use a primate for that. Typically, they are very small and they take too long to... to uh, oh, today's just not my day. Let me, let's try that again. Typically, they are very small and they take too long to develop. We can use animals to grow human cells, um, human organs for transplant. Yes, but there are scientists who say that even if you're successful in growing human organs like a liver, a heart, or uh, uh, lungs for human beings, we cannot use those organs because they are simply too small. A small monkey cannot grow the lungs of human beings. Okay. Now, in another article, it says, okay, controversial chimera embryos made by scientists are part human, part monkey. Okay. 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 So again, this is uh, published recently. Now, there was a lot of hoo-ha about this research back in 2019. And you know, now people are going ahead with it. They, they don't care. They say, oh, I don't, I don't care if there are legal issues around it or ethical issues around it. As long as it is legal in China, I can do that. These particular experiments may have been conducted in China to get around legal issues that might have prevented the work elsewhere. So the speculation is that even with regulations, it's not very helpful because regulations in different countries are just different. If it is prohibited in a country, usually a developed country with a stronger ethical and regulatory framework, they can just move the experiments to other countries. That's the problem with regulations for science, right? Where do you where do you draw the line? How do you impose regulations that are universally accepted? Okay. And it says in this case all the embryos were destroyed within 20 days. So they didn't actually grow into adulthood. They, they were just 20 days old before they were destroyed. But questions swirl around what would happen if such embryonic organisms were let to live longer, potentially developing the rudiments of a nervous system or even aspects of consciousness or emotions. At that point, when we grow these embryos to say, how about two years old, three years old, these animals, are they animals or are they human beings? If they are halfway there, do we grant them half the human rights that we have? Do we give them things like, okay, um, housing? Do we um, do do we make it illegal to keep them in the labs where they are in a confined space? What do we do with these animals? And the lines between humans and animals, it becomes very blurred. There is a strong um, ethical incentive not to push. Uh, research that far that will create a hybrid that looks like the one that I showed you earlier, right, right here. Right? If we do create a creature or a human, half human, half animal um, hybrid like this, okay, there will be legal implications on what we can, what they can do, and what we can do to them. Now, uh, some of you might say, you no, know, um, some scientists rather they say. These are animals, they don't have human consciousness because the brains remain, you know, remain animal brains and um, they don't have the consciousness of a human being. They're just there for us to grow human organs so that we can harvest the organs and then implant it on human beings. I see where the, where the problem is, right? Uh, we have a shortage of human organs and most of the time, when we need organ, uh, organ transplants, we have to get it from other people, other donors. We can't always get it from live donors because certain organs are crucial, they're essential, like the heart. Okay? If you, are, you can only get heart or lungs or, I don't know, even brains from a dead person. You can't get it from a living being. And there are just not that many useful, healthy lungs and hearts that you can get from. So how about we get the human stem cell from a patient and we grow the organs inside these animals we can harvest from these animals because these animals um, they don't have rights they are in some ways in, in a very dark way we can kill these animals no problem we can take their their heart they are grown to match the dna of the human being of the patient okay we can take that and then transplant it into the human being and their 
Um, theoretically, it can match more accurately with our DNA, so the body, our body, would not reject the organ. But uh, I'll show you some some interesting ex uh, experiments that have been done. Okay, this is an experiment done on rats. Okay, now if you can see it, it says this. Uh, there was an experiment done on rats by inserting human brain cells into the brains of mouse pups, like mice, basically. One unexpected outcome of the team's research, published in this journal of neuroscience, was that these human mouse chimeras outperformed normal mice almost fourfold in a variety of cognition tests. That means these mice with human cells in them are smarter than the regular mice. That's quite interesting. They are starting to develop some level of intelligence that's closer to human beings. Now, do they have the consciousness? Do they have the awareness of a human being? Probably not, but if we push the experiments far enough, we could turn these mice into human beings, which is why this uh, article was titled, When Does a Smart Mouse Become Human? Okay. So there's a lot of um, ethical questions surrounding this uh, kind of hybrid. Now, stem cell research is great, but when we combine stem cell research with animals, that's when it becomes very, very controversial, it's questionable. Um, now, this is not the first time we have done these experiments on creating hybrids. It's always been ethically controversial. Uh, there was a Russian scientist back in the early 1900s. His name is Ilya Ivanovich. Ivanovich Ivanov, pardon me, okay, Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. He tried very hard to create a human-ape hybrid by inseminating chimpanzees with human sperm. But he was unsuccessful because it, you know, he didn't really understand how uh, genetics work back then. So he was unsuccessful. Now that we know how genetics work, we are attempting the same thing. But this is a bit different because we're not creating a human-ape hybrid in the sense that you know, we create an entire species. No, uh, in the chimera, we are just creating an organism with some human tissues in it. Okay, quite different from uh, what he was aiming for. Okay, now uh, in terms of what you can use these examples for, I think it's a very inter interesting development. Uh, you could talk about signs. Okay, let me let me shift this a little. Uh, you can use this example for scientific research. Okay, should there be more regulations on science? Maybe you could argue that even with regulations is irrelevant because countries, uh, scientists can just move from one country to another country where the regul where where the regula regulations are a bit more lax. Um, another question that you can argue is science and ethics cannot coexist. Do you agree? In some ways, we can see why scientists are pushing for this um, human animal hybrids. Okay, they have legitimate reasons to, to do that because they want to extend the human lifespan and um, there comes the ethical questions okay do all scientific research that pushes the boundaries okay touch on some sort of ethics every time something that's groundbreaking uh, comes up and we'll say oh it is unethical now is that true um, this uh, reminds me of what people said of television in the past when television first came out People say the television was the work of a devil. There were ethical questions surrounding television. Can you imagine that? So uh, this is up to debate. Okay, um, I don't have a clear answer for that, but I'm sure. You know, if you dive in deeper into the um, the you know, even scientists, they can't give you a clear answers on that. So if you dive dive deeper into these issues, maybe you have um, you form an opinion of your own. To me, I believe that ethics always changes. Okay, um, maybe it seems unethical right now. Okay, it seemed rather unethical back then in the early 1900s. Right now, there's a bit of hoo-ha, but people didn't really pay that much. Um, they didn't really ma make that much noise over this. Um, maybe people are more accepting towards creating this kind of human animal hybrid. Perhaps, yeah. So ethics is always changing, as always. Now, let me know what you think of this uh, video. If you like this video, let us know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our, to our uh, channel. If you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, do remember to follow us on here, I, okay? On firstclass.gp, okay, on Instagram. I think it's a great channel. There's a lot of content out there for you to look at. If you are taking the general paper, if you are, if you are taking any sort of um, 
uh, exams on English, we'll be sharing a lot of tips on vocabulary, on answering techniques, on writing skills that you can use. And once again, this is KP from First Class GP. Till then, we'll see you next time.